2013 Chevy Cruze with the engine 1.4 liters turbocharged water pump replacement this is your water pump right here we're gonna proceed and remove the air box the engine support and bracket but first you have to lift the vehicle put them on, on a stand and we're gonna support the engine as well because we're gonna remove the engine support we're gonna support the engine from the bottom also before we do that we're gonna drain the coolant and to drain the coolant this is what I did put a small hose in it remove the skid plate connect the hose in there and then uh, loosen that uh, loosen that uh, by hand in order to start draining the coolant so we're gonna start the process of removing this and I'll keep recording after I remove them for the next uh, step the air, air box is really easy to remove it doesn't have any bolts on this uh, type of vehicle they just uh, this rubber um, they sit sit on this and this over here we have to just pull it up then disconnect this hose over here and uh, disconnect it from here I tried to do it from the from over here from the from that connector connection on the bottom but it was really hard so I just end up doing it over here so next we're gonna support the vehicle the uh, engine from the bottom and we're gonna remove the the engine support and uh, support bracket okay once we have already removed the uh, engine support mount which is this one we remove those three bolts on the top and then one on each side and one on the uh, back side of here so we will get that out one, uh, that one out of the way and then this one has a uh, the all 15 millimeter milli, millimeters size so this one has three bolts one on on side one on this side the other one on this side one on the bottom loosen that all the way out then we can get this one out of the way the bracket and now we're going to support within the screwdriver we're going to support each one of these like at an angle Probably like that, and we're gonna lose the other ones, the other bolts. Put it right there, put a little bit of pressure, and we're gonna lose all of them. And then, once we get them all loose, then we're gonna take them out. We're gonna remove this hose over here, thermostat housing, and uh, we'll keep we keep updating on the process with the video. Okay, I forgot to mention that you're gonna need a uh, Torx. A socket set because most of the bolts here are Torx so I'm using the one I have been using three so far and they are Torx E12 Torx E10 and Torx E14 those are the bit sets you're gonna need so far but I just purchased a, a set like mine an auto store and so since we already have removed the uh, three bolts for the pulley then we're gonna remove three bolts for the uh, thermostat housing also remove the clip to remove the hose this clip right here this clip right here remove it with the uh, with a with one of those picks just remove it and pull pull up and then push to the side and then just do the same thing on the other side and then just wiggle the hose back out if you can then you have to remove this plastic over here hose but uh, that's how I did it I'm gonna remove this with three bolts and then I'm gonna go ahead and remove that clamp over here for the hose and start working on the water pump right after we have removed uh, thermostat housing is right there 
three bolts, like I mentioned, I end up removing this hose, plastic hose. You push on the sides, on the side, of, on the side, like so, and pull. Be careful because they are very brittle. They break really easy. Also, on the hose, uh, heater hose right here. There's the heater hose that's connected right there on the bottom. You remove the clamp back and then with the with a pick you go very careful not to pinch not to damage the hose and then you go inside and around all the way that you can do you, that you can while it's installed right here on the bottom like that around around that tube without damaging the hose and then that that will help loosen the hose and get it out so um, we're doing some progress and we're about to remove the water pump and it seems to have uh let's see one two three four five six like seven eight we'll see how many bolts but if you want to know how many you can look in your new water pump as well removing all the bolts just keep a track of the bolts some of them are longer than others I have removed uh, the water pump, it's right there. I have to use a uh, screwdriver to put them on this uh, side over here with the little lip right there and kind of put pressure this side because it was well, well sealed in there. And it seems to be the original one. It has a GM on it. So it was time to change it. It's uh, very corroded on the inside and it has a play on it it's uh, the bearing is damaged so it was time for it so now what we're gonna do we're gonna prepper, pre prepare that area where the uh, new water pump is gonna sit we're gonna take all the dirtiness of the uh, dirt oil and we're gonna clean it real good and put the new uh, water pump in place after we have cleaned very well our uh, mating area engine and water pump we're gonna proceed and install the new water pump on it and I believe the water pump uh, always go by um, by feeling on the, on the tightness of the bolt but they usually go from seven foot pounds to nine foot pounds of torque all right. All right. I wanted to keep you updated on the uh, bolts. These bolts are longer. The one that had all thread on it. There's one here. There's one right there. Second, second one right here. Third one right here. The ones with all threaded bolts. Now the other, the, they are too bigger. They just have a small, like a quarter of a thread on it. Of the length of the bolt this one right here and this one right here on the bottom right here not the bottom one but the next to it so there's two big ones and there's three all threaded and I uh, I've already show you where they go hope uh, this helps you okay so I have already installed the water pump and the uh, thermostat housing I tied them all put some um, put the hose back on and I put my um, serpentine belt in there prior for um, before I put my uh, bracket over here so it will be easier you put pressure on this bolt right here down and it will clear so you can put your belt it goes the diagram goes like that go in there around on the back and up and it goes also from your pulley it goes back over there to your uh, alternator so that will give you more uh, it's better to do it right now that you have more space than bef than later now that I have hand tied my water pump pulley in place I remove this one just a little bit off I'm gonna put pressure on that pulley again and I'm gonna install it back right I'm gonna go ahead and install the serpentine belt all the way in so that way I can also tie this one up and have it all in place so I'm gonna do that right now
this is what it's gonna look like after you have finished installing your serpentine belt so it's gonna be on your pulleys and all your pulleys and then you're gonna put your bracket back on and remember to tie this up you're gonna hold you're gonna hold it first you're gonna stop from the uh, the, um, the pulley from rolling or spinning while you tight your bolts okay don't forget to tie them up all right sir so after you have to install your, um, your water pump, your pulley, you put your bracket, and then you install your uh, your motor mount. Then you're gonna put your air box in place, air box, and add the coolant, bleed your uh, coolant system properly. You're gonna put coolant over there. All the way up until you fill it up and then you're gonna come over here to the radiator and lose that up until you don't hear any more bubbles or air coming out of it with the vehicle off you're gonna bleed that air because the air tends to stay on the system so sometimes you get an overheating problem like that so keep an eye on that